What's going on? My name is Jared Burke. And if you're new to my channel, I talk about everything creative from programs like Photoshop, CapCut, Canva, and others. And today we're going to talk about what makes a good YouTube thumbnail. Theory wise, there are a bunch of ways to actually do thumbnails and there's some that are really successful in a wide range of design aesthetics. But I want to focus on the ones that maybe are more difficult for the novice designer or even some advanced designers to create. And I'm going to go through those step by step and then I'm going to let you choose what you think is best for your channel. But before we get into the video, I appreciate the subscribe, the likes, whatever it is that I'm supposed to tell you in the beginning of the video. Either way, I'm going to give you the knowledge that I've learned over these last decade. Let's jump in. I've been fortunate enough to create some YouTube thumbnails that have done numbers in the past, millions. And there's certain things that I've learned from creating those, as well as just the ones that I've browsed throughout the internet. Number one thing is to have the subject matter match the video. Some good examples of this, Ali Abdal, Peter McKinnon. They both do a great job at subtle subject matter. So it doesn't always have to be over the top. Peter is in the photography, videography area, and he's mastered how to either have himself as a subject, the subject be the actual item, or both of them. And it just matches a nice clean aesthetic that is actually really effective. Ali's done a good job of this as well, and they have either icons or you're using just simple text or these big numbers that are drawing you in. It works for his niche, it's effective, and it keeps it without being too cluttered. Even when there are some actual icons all over the screen, it makes sense. And I did say over the top, and I said that specifically for Mr. Beast, because I was looking through his thumbnails and it's getting into the realm of just that fun nature type of thumbnail that actually meets expectation. So if you can master that, that is an easy first step to having the successful thumbnail. Color and mood are another great way of understanding how to capture the eyes of people. I searched YouTube looking at Minecraft videos and they all kind of keep that same aesthetic when it comes to these eye popping, colorful designs. This is very effective for that niche and it's effective for grabbing the eye. While searching Minecraft, I actually found this podcast called Tiger Belly and they have a really great aesthetic when it comes to the thumbnails. They keep the same background, they make that standard and the only thing that interchanges is the guests and the hosts making these kind of crazy, crazy faces. So those are really good ways of using color and actually understanding how to do it. And there's a bunch of them, I'll throw them on the screen. Colorful thumbnails have pretty much ruled for a while, especially when we get into people using dark mode on their phones and on their desktops, because now the colors and the images are gonna pop in a different way. If color is not the route that you wanna go with your thumbnails, mood is also a great way to pull people in and get people familiar with who you are. I found this guy YC Imaging, and he has a great understanding of how to build some familiarity with his thumbnails by just using himself and the products that he has, kind of similar to Peter McKinnon. And it makes sense. The videographers and photographers are going to be great at actually building out these nice portrait type of looks without having to be a Photoshop master or a cap cut genius. Tip number three, and this kind of leads into the rest of the video, be creative. I've made over a million dollars in my career because I'm getting paid to continuously tap into my mind and be creative. If you can master how to be creative, I don't care what field of work you work in or what niche you're in. If you understand how to tap into your creativity, people are gonna recognize that and you're gonna stand out from the crowd instead of only standing in. These next few channels we're gonna to mention took creativity to a whole new level, very similar to Mr. Beast. Now, as you start to go up the creativity ladder, you're gonna to start to get into more photo manipulation. So that's where you really are gonna need Photoshop or some kind of creative genius that is gonna be able to help you actually build these things out. Ryan Trahan, Brian Chung, Preston, they've done a really good job at just getting super creative when it comes to making these thumbnails and you see that they're taking the subject matter to another level. They have half the face as an AI bot or whatever it is, or the different ways that they're actually using themselves as props in these different videos and stuff like that. These are some of the designs I'm really excited to teach you how to create, because if you can master these, it's gonna open your mind up even for the more simpler things or simpler thumbnails that you try to create. Before we move on, another channel that I have to mention, of course, is Marcus Brownlee. Like he has done a very good job at being minimalistically creative. 
I don't even know if that is a real term. I just made it up right now on the spot. It's not even in my script. But as you see, scrolling through his different thumbnails, you can see that he does the standard tech review type of vibes, but he also gets deeper into him sitting on the MacBook or doing other creative things like that. That is gonna to start to tap into a nice creativity that's not over the top, but it also lets people know that you're doing a little bit different thing than the status quo that you see all over the tech channels or the certain niches that you are in. As we're looking through these different videos, there are certain things that I wanted to kind of leave breadcrumbs to that I want to talk about. And the first thing is close-ups. Close-ups are a very big, powerful, popular way of showing people not only who you are and who they're about to see, but the subject matter of what's going to be in the actual thumbnail. The closer you are in the thumbnail is going to make the subconscious mind feel that much more receptive to whatever you're talking about. So an easy way to do that is just to follow the rule of thirds. After six years of college and 13 years of design, all that means to me is balance your images. Either put it on the right, the left, or dead center. Most of the times you're going to see this either on the right or left because that leaves room for text or products or the crazy imagery that might be behind you. But it also gives you some leeway for either progression or movement. What I mean by this is, have you ever seen the before or afters or someone that has a progression in a job or maybe you're making a meal? They have these different progression shots that go from left to right. I had to make sure I did that right. Left to right on the screen. And it actually shows a progression in maybe two or three shots. It's very simple. Sometimes it has arrows to show direction or different things like that. But those simple type of designs don't take a lot of design aesthetic or acumen, but it does get the point across that you're getting into a space of progression or time. It's also important to understand the opposites attract. So Android, iPhone, um, New York Giants and the New York Jets. I'm from Jersey, so I'm going with the Giants. The different things like that are going to cause some engagement, some interaction in your comments because now you're getting to a space of who's right and who's wrong. And at the end of the day, that's going to gain you attention and attention is one of the hardest things to get. Speaking of attention, gestures are another good way to actually move people through your subject matter. So those pointing fingers that kind of get annoying or, or they're just always leading you to exactly what you need to see on the actual thumbnail, they're actually important and effective. Don't be afraid to use those in your design, just don't go overboard with it. While gestures are a great way to pull people in, you can just always go to standard root of text. Now, I personally believe, and this is just me, that too much text is doing the most. But if you're using it subtly as maybe a headliner, like some of these ones that I'll put on the screen right now, or if you're using it subtly in a certain type of way, it can be very effective in making sure that people understand that there's something going on in the subject matter, but it's not overcrowding. So as you see in this Mr. Beast thumbnail, it just has that little number in the corner. And that's just letting you know that there's more of these. So if I like this one, I can go find another one. This also works great for episodes. This works great for part ones, part twos, different things like that. If you can start to figure out a way to show progression in that small little subtle way of just the number in the corner, it starts to draw people in. And that goes beyond just expectation of that video but the videos to come. As we round up the tips of creating effective thumbnails, I just want you to wrap your mind around these things. And number one, you do not have to be a Photoshop expert to create really good thumbnails. So it's important to just remember, subject and creativity are gonna take you a long way when it comes to thumbnails. Last but not least, they can be changed. So this is, I think, one of the biggest things about thumbnails. It's okay to go back and change and do some A-B testing and make sure that you actually have something that's gonna work for your channel. So there you have it. That's my tips, tricks, and advice when it comes to thumbnails. I did a good amount of research and those are the ones that are effective from the standpoint of design. Now I wanna focus more so on design because now I'm gonna teach you how to actually create those. And then we're gonna to continue to elevate and kind of give you different styles throughout these different parts of this YouTube thumbnail series. And you're gonna be able to create it step by step because I'm gonna teach it in a way that even if you didn't open Photoshop before today, you'll be able to design it. That's all I got today. It is Jay Burke. I'll see you next time.